Um, this is our November 13th finance committee meeting that I will call to order and um, we can start in. Uh, anybody here will be very many objections to the official We get Shelly. Shelly, you're good with all that stuff. Brian, I see you there. Can you hear us? Thumbs up. All good? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. We can hear you. I love it. We are rocking and rolling. So for today's meeting, I think we um, have, have just a few um, high level items to go over. We're looking at capital projects for the district. Um, so I don't know, Tina, you tell me, do we want to start high level with this or do we want to go with Brian's stuff first? Um, I think if we just did this high level and just started talking about the capital projects funds that we wanted to talk about with our current monies and then opened it up to more capital projects that we have on the horizon. And that's why we have Brian on the call to talk about capital projects for the horizon. If that's OK with y'all. Love it. I, and I will mention, I think it's good. We've got Ms. Powell and Mr. Guthrie both on our facilities committee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that is perfect because it uh, lines up with the exactly. area you need to look at. Right. Because well. we went over the listing last time of the capital projects from our three year CIP plan and then the update where we are now. And um, Tony Souls and Rhonda were very instrumental in working on that um, and bringing that to y'all. And um, this listing that we have. Is from that update. Yeah. So we have just a couple of additional items that we added on here, but um, after going over meeting with leadership and after talking with y'all, it's just some of the things that we that came out of that work that weren't necessarily on our three year CIP plan um, that are immediate needs. So we had talked about the HVAC replacements, the aluminum steps and rails. One thing we didn't have was the mini activity buses for the high schools. We had talked about that, that would be something good. And again, I'm just trying to go through this a little quickly. Um, if y'all wanted to talk about anything in detail, holler. Um, and just going about the buses, um, Ms. was saying that each high school will get two of those 15 passenger um, like buses, which would help with some of your smaller teams like your tennis and you take two if you want to take both your JV and your uh, RC softball team so then that way you would not need a uh, driver with a CDL. So this allows us our coaches to go ahead and drive these and so they would not need a big bus and would not need a uh, driver with a CDL. So this helps us a little bit with our um, bus driver situation as well. There will be some training for our coaches or those people that would drive those 15 passenger um, buses. Um, but those would be something that would add uh, kind of to our fleet at each high school. And the two per high school, that's the total for the six buses? Yes, ma'am. And currently they're using the regular buses? Yes. And they have, I believe, some 30 passengers, am I right? Um, yes, they have some big activity buses. And so those require somebody with a CDL. It's more sports. Yes, and activities it could be anything. It could be a chess club. It could be our esports team. They can take those as well. Yes, they would start for you some type of training, and they wouldn't need to see you. For us to get some plans put together, financial services for our on council and financial advisor. Um, we also have an emergency and unforeseen repairs. It's kind of our catch all where we can put everything else. Um, um, next item is a grant match for cameras on our buses. So we had applied for um, a safety grant with the um, Department of Justice. It's a federal grant um, above what any of the state grants provide to us. And so we actually were awarded that is five hundred thousand dollars, but we had to put in a match. So for the items that we had requested were for some more additional security cameras on our buses. And so this would allow them to have additional cameras also with the um, ability to download electronically instead of having to go to the actual bus and pull the tapes. So all of the buses would have this capability. So that's the DD2 match would be the 288. 
Um, the next item we've been talking about this, and we just put some more numbers, but this will be the devices for K through five that we refresh next year. They're new Chromebooks. Um, so for all of them to be outfitted and to have some additional for student growth is 5.6 million. We'll also need some servers and switches and the network access controls that go along with all of that. Um, we had some end of life servers that needed to be replaced. So um, those items are captured here. We also included under adult ed the renovation of that space. Um, that's the current building where the special services is will be converted to adult education and we'll move adult ed back from the um, learning cottages that are at Knightsville. So that's the, um, the that's estimate. Excuse me. Knightsville will be utilizing all of the cottages that's out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. For next year? Mm -hmm. Some of them. Just some on. of them. Yeah, so not all of them. Okay, the reason I'm asking is um, how many cottages is adult ed utilized now? Um, across the day. Just out there today. Um, that's a great question. I want to say. Some of our friends know. 10? Yeah. 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 Okay. There's a reason for all these questions. Yep. As you may or may not know, I go and visit the schools and listen to the teachers and staff and whoever wants to talk. And there's a big push now as to why certain things are being bought, renovated, etc. when we have such a major need for funding in order to retain some of our staff personnel and um, even encourage others to come here. And so I'm just looking at whether or not there are certain things we could hold. Up. And I'm, I'm just throwing that out because. Well, I will say this is a different pot of money. This is okay. specific for capital projects. No operations. No, we can't pay for any salaries gotcha. for teaching out of here. No, ma'am. Okay. But that's a good question question that we can come back to in just a little bit. And this is a well, it's good for them, you know, those that are listening on the outside to also be able to hear that. Sure. Absolutely. Because they see us doing certain things right. and they want to know, well, why can't some of that money be used here or whatever? Okay. Just be correct. This is like a prioritized list. Like we have a lot more capital improvement things that right. are needed. This is just like, hey, these are at the top of the list that so, oh, I understand. Yeah, okay. The public may not necessarily yeah. understand that. All that's why I want to bring this happening. Absolutely. So that's okay. good to bring that up. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like this isn't just like minute two, so. this is like, hey, these are a priority because we have like a bajillion more that need be, to be done too. Sure. Like these yes. can't wait. Absolutely correct. Um, the next item um, after the adult ed space would be at Ashley Ridge High School. We need to restore the retention pond that it's out there. Um, costs a lot of money, but it's something that we have to do. Unfortunately, it's just grown up like crazy out there. Um, the next item, I know we talked about this in the with Ms. Bates in the um, capital in the facilities committee. I'm sorry mm -hmm. for replacing the track at Fort Dorchester. So that that's on here as well. Yeah, they're on your three with no revenue. So I said they're on your three. So yeah, definitely need that. Um, also for um, the next item is Greg Middle School for some roof replacement in two sections. Um, you know, Greg Middle School is huge. They have a lot of roofs. Um, Summerville Elementary, they have a roof replacement in two of their sections. Um, and also to replace a breezeway that's on the back wing that goes to the main building. Um, Summerville High School, as we talked about in the um, facilities committee, um, to do the second floor where we had done the first floor this year, that is to do the second floor for replacement for the floor. Um, for Sombra High School, a new softball press box, that's um, something that um, is added to this list. I think we touched on it a little bit in the facilities um, report. They currently do not have a press box, and this will be in conjunction um, with their, there's some money that they have for their booster um, club that they're going to have. So this is not going to, Pay for everything to get this done. They currently do not have a press box. So, is this the amount the district's 
putting yes. towards it and then they're so they're going to get matching. matching. Yes. Matching but, well, I wouldn't say matching. Well, they're, 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 they're going to, they're going to, to the bed. Yes. Do we know? Do we know what the total cost is? Um, right now, we're looking at, they still have to give the drawings to us. They have to be approved through um, from Tony yeah. and right. through our architects. So they have to get a firm that, that has to be reckonable. So that's what we're working on right now. Just want to bring that to you. Yeah. And also, just to point out that these are estimated costs. We uh, okay. don't want to put exact, exact dollars because. You know, we have to go out for bid for these projects. Which is to make sure. I wasn't sure if these were like you did, and this is kind of what came back. Some of like these the are average or something. Yes, you never know. If there's going to be a little something extra, or actually, we don't want to spend that much. <laughs> we don't want the the contractors to come back and say, "Oh, you said it was going to be 500. My quote is 4.99." Um, so, so we don't want to definitely say that these are exact costs. Um, so the last item on here is um, to replace a generator, and so that gives us our total that we received for our 8% money this year of 19 million 188. So we wanted to bring that to y'all, and we were um, just talking that this usually comes out of facilities, and we talked about it in facilities, but we don't have a facilities meeting necessarily this month, so it's great that y'all are here <laughs> to, to talk with us during the finance committee meeting. So. Exactly, exactly. So that's why we wanted to bring this. I'm so happy that y'all are here to do this now. We can see if that's something that facility <laughs> and um, finance would want to bring to the board this evening. Um, if y'all are comfortable doing that. Yeah, and so I just want to make sure. So you, so you guys have already been through all of this information. We did, yeah. Okay. And so you would agree that this is the prioritized. Yes, List. Okay. Um, anything from a safety perspective that needed addressing? Um, as far as that, I guess the any person get some of the things are your safety, but can we talk to the president or Mr. Souls? So was there like a bigger list, and then this has been pared down? Yeah, so we had we did the study, and it's like yeah. multiple pages. Um, this is like this the, is the highest priority spread. Right? I thought normally we do stuff from like every school. Uh, so a lot of things were, were sort of cosmetic. We were able to kind of do more horror type things, or was it, I guess, yeah. big baby type things? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that, are you talking out of the list that we went through the last facilities meeting, the multi page list? Correct. Is, okay. And then again, we got Mr. Soltz here. And we also went through projects that were um, like high priority for maybe that we're in this next fiscal year that we that we pulled into this that really needed to go now instead of later instead of waiting. I have a strange question. So I hear mixed reviews about the Chromebook. Is there? I mean, if we go ahead and pull this to the board today, are we going at it approving that we're going and moving forward with the Chromebooks and buying that um, or putting a RFP out for the whatever bid. We um, don't necessarily have to get those until the spring because we were um, implementing them in the fall, but um, that was the, the Yeah, I'm just wondering if this to, goes to the whole board today and then we vote on it. Are we just approving all these things specifically to move forward with? So I don't know. Unless you didn't want to, but, but the but the initiative was to go to Chromebooks for all of the yeah, students. I understand. But if y'all would feel better waiting, I don't want anybody to feel pressured. There was some comment. There were comments made regarding the, I think the Chromebooks when I was visiting a high school. I just hear a lot. Yeah. Well, the question is now that we've had them and we've had some time with them, would it be smart to get feedback before we move forward and mm -hmm. purchase five, wait, five and a half million dollars worth of supplies? Just to get all of the elementary students yeah, I moved to um, the Chromebooks now that we have the secondary students. So they will be all on one platform. But one thing we could do on this list, if you're not comfortable with the Chromebooks, we can pull that for another time. I mean, since we're, I not, just, you know, since we're not going to purchase them. Since you have until the spring. Right. I'm so sure if, if there was some more discussion on that, we can. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, as, as Tina was talking about, these other ones were some things. Yeah. Is, is there anything on here that's super time sensitive? Uh, I might turn that to Mr. Souls. Anything time sensitive on these, Mr. Souls? <laughs> The one thing that I think is time sensitive is uh, 
We still have some other funding um, still in the, like for emergencies, we still have some funding left. I think the list, I guess. I think that the one thing that Tom said too, I think we need to do, uh, and there's a school for retention planning that all have to read. That's uh, been kind of a neglected area for quite some time. Um, always, a generator is always a time sensitive thing. If we, we survive this hurricane season, thank goodness, but uh, I have one in place before the next year. Uh, the roofing that is identified on this list is, is roofs that we have active leaks and we are throwing patches on on a, a, a rain event by rain event basis. So it's, there's a lot of... We really do need to renovate the space over for adult ed. Because you know we don't know how that space over at Devon Road is going to be utilized, but we need that space renovated as quickly as possible so those bubbles will be available next year, just in case we need to move students into them. Uh, that's, that's a track at Fort Dorchester High School. That's been an ongoing situation, and that's uh, we don't want those, those student athletes to have to. Miss out on another track season because of that. Uh, I can make a I can make a time sensitive case for just about every item on this list. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, and then I guess the longer you wait, the higher the price goes. Yeah, that's so that's that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the big thing. Yeah. You said something about the track possibly being done sooner, so they could bring in the. I don't know if it could be done for this season. That track, that track, uh, Mr. Souls, that would not, would it be done for this season at all? Since that's what, March? There's going to be some uh, repair to, done to it here very shortly. And to get us through this track season? That, that's our hopes. And then after track season, that's start track right season away. Yeah. And wipe clean and start over. Okay, thank you. Um, we had some questions. So look, going back to that professional services, that's, that's a pretty big sum. Do we know more what, what that's for specifically? Is that is that a line item every year pretty much? It is. It's for architects, engineers, and professional services. So we have that, so we roll that over every year basically for capital as projects. needed yes. capital project services. Yes, we're, we're always in need of uh, professional services, architects, uh, uh, site engineers, uh, so yeah, like a that money. So I, I, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's kind of a retainer for the district because we have to have a budget line item for it right. for us to use those services year after year. We have to have budget for yeah. it. So that, I guess that does make and sense. That's so it's not an estimation. That's not exact. Absolutely. It's okay. not that's exact. Right. I mean, it's, they they charge us. We have, a, we have a, a solicitation out there and we have a, a set rate for the fixed price bid for those services and we use those guys on a daily basis, I'm in contact with somebody about right. some project that we need professional certain design services for. Yeah, so that's just like, I should put design services. Parking lot renovations, site work. Yeah. I agree. So I, I think the only ones, in, and we're just having some conversation there, talking about the technology pieces. Obviously, the Chromebooks make sense. I say they make sense in the fact that I, we understand what that is. Um, the servers and switch, switches and then the network access controls. Or do we have specific items that we're looking to upgrade there? Do we know what? So what are those two line items? So, so the, for, the, for the servers, all our servers right now are Hyperflex. The Cisco Hyperflex. They're all reaching their end of life in February. So our plan is to Preempt that by the fact my team has agreed to work over the Christmas break so that we don't have to do that during school year. Those ones have to be replaced because I mean they're just at the end of life. There's nothing we can do about it. That's just what it is. Um, and then for the network access control, that's basically to control the servers and every service that the that data center provides. Um, those those would have been replaced at some point anyway. The only problem I think was that we did not have a replacement replacement plan in place. 
And so now we're having to deal with uh, the idea that we have this was that they have to be replaced. Otherwise, if we let them pass February, if something were to happen, there's absolutely no support. We'll not get tax, we'll not get support. So is that because we took we took the technology in house? Like was Canty providing those updates previously for no, the servers? No, those servers were they are nine ten years old. They're very old servers that are sitting there. We would have to replace them whether we were with Canty or whether we're back in house. So when we say end of life, is it end of life like technology? You know, like computers, like there's like a window they recommend upgrading technology. Like, is there a reason they're not working as well? They're not supporting what we need them to support. Like, is there a reason that needs to be done sooner than they're nine years old? Well, I know that, but like. I have a computer that's 10 years old and it works wonderfully. So I'm just saying, <laughs> on top of it, like, I'm not saying I'm technology I do know is ever changing. Don't get me wrong. I work in graphic design, so I, I work on technology. I'm just saying, is there like a reason right now that like specifically they're, are they not keeping up? Are they not able to sustain what we need them to? Like more than just them being old. So if you have, again, remember, this is not my laptop. It's not my desktop. This is the core of what runs the district. If that thing fails after the uh, end of life, we have no support whatsoever. So the idea is if we let this thing go past that, we run the risk of something going wrong. They've already determined that that's the length of time that this should be running. Uh, right now, if it, if it fails, we'll get the support. After February, there's no support. There's, they tell us basically why do you still have to run it. The software. And, and also the software that's run on the so it's, it's basically because in, in, in a former life doing technology, so when you're looking at the enterprise that's great. devices, they they have basically an end of life that so like, like HP or Dell, whoever it is, like they legitimately say after this date, mm -hmm. we will no longer give you any support on this device. Yeah, which I understand. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, that is a real thing. So, we're coming up on that in February, you're saying. That's correct. So, you were going to replace that over Christmas, so it didn't. So, students are not here, we can use that time to actually replace the budget and parents that were no longer Christmas. Okay. So, that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you want to just pull the Chromebooks then? Because that's not something. Yeah. Is, is everybody here okay? I, I, and, and, so we're just discussing maybe for now removing the line item for the Chromebooks. Not saying that we're not going to move forward with that. We just need, I think, some more time to, to digest it a little to bit. Do you like maybe um, since we have that thought exchange, kind of see how people get feedback, 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 feedback like how they're working, if it, whatever. Just why not utilize that? students and parents. Yeah, and teachers. And teachers. teachers. teachers yes. But I think we also need to identify as well when you move that down to the elementary levels. Because right now, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the elementary levels, they use very different devices. They use iPads, they use okay. more yes. focused on that population, right? Would we, so would everybody be getting the Chromebooks? And we'd be getting, because right now we do like a iPad. K through two, we do, I believe, or it's 4K through two, it's an iPad, and then three, four, and five, it's. Like, yeah, so would they all go to Chromebook then? Yes, not not your 4K. They would, 4K would not. Like kindergarten or five. Is there so is there programming at those very young ages? So I don't believe Dr. Singh is so like the kindergarten through two. Can you configure a Chromebook to be very specific to those very young ages? Yes, because when you think about programming in today's world, it's actually based on HTML5. Which is really basically the same, it's on a web based. So it's cloud based environment that they're bringing in. And anything that runs the web will run those programs. So 99% of the programs we have, there are very few programs that I've seen those that uh, will say, well, we want this very specific tool, which sometimes doesn't make sense to some of us. It's like, why do you want to do that? But some do. But 99% of all the applications now run as part of the cloud base. So it doesn't matter the device itself, as long as you have web access, you're okay. Which, which is why the Chromebook has really gained momentum, because you pay less, it's super fast, and it's able to accomplish everything else that the machine that lock you down. Uh, is, is still good. So you're getting both of the speed, and also you're getting to get the same services that you need. 
Yeah, I think maybe for tonight's purposes, if, if everybody here is okay, move forward minus the Chromebook line item, mm -hmm. and then we'll just go through some more information. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Super. Thank you. Absolutely. So let's, um, because it's monetary, we will take it out of committee. committee. Um, so maybe they'd like to make a motion. Uh, make a motion to accept or take the capital funding project request out of committee minus the Chromebook line for the board. Second. Sorry, that was a really weird motion. Motion and a second. Um, all the, any discussion? Any further discussion? All good. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. So speaking of their right, this little list of capital projects, and as Ms. Bates set this up very nicely about all of the gazillion other projects yeah. that we have, um, we have our financial advisor, Brian Norick, who I think y'all met um, online, or y'all seen him at some conferences, y'all spoken with him. Um, he's our financial advisor and is talking with us about um, a way to fund all the gazillion other projects that we have. Well, maybe not all of the gazillions, but some of them, but some of them. Did you want We'd to We'd love see? to fund a gazillion. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty big number. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for, for inviting me to your all's uh, meeting. I just want to hit a couple of high points uh, just to kind of maybe encapsulate um, everything that's going on here. Uh, on the refunding front, on December 1st, you're going to close on your install and purchase revenue bond refinancing. You're going to net $7.4 in savings. That contributes to having more money to do other things with. And then uh, in January, you'll have another resolution to refinance. Um, the bond issue, uh, old referendum bond issue that we refinanced with TD Bank. They've agreed to move the rate to tax exempt. Um, that's going to go from 1.9% to 1.53. That's going to net you an additional $2.6 million. So that's just make sure the board's aware that's going to come before you at the January meeting because we have to close on uh, March 1st. So we pretty much have gone through everything that we can refinance, you know, through the quantitative e quantitative easing uh, period of, of the Federal Reserve. And, you know, looking at your overall program from a baseline perspective, you fund as much as you can because you have a lot of needs at 65 mils. And from time to time, you adjust that 65 mil uh, number. You have done it before through bond referendums. Uh, but, you know, here we're at a point where you can start funding more than just your 8% program. So we, we have some school districts that have very hard line to find 8% programs and then referendum programs. Uh, there's been a little bit of distance of time since your last referendum, but you're really at a point in time where some installment purchase revenue bonds are being paid off, some old referendum debt is being paid off, and you're gonna have a nice clean slate to, to talk about uh, maybe one referendum, maybe even uh, like I was part of the Beaufort referendum just passed, um, their phase two, uh, you know, of some phases of referendums. So there's there's really some flexibility uh, coming up in your in your program. Looking at your your eight percent program uh, in in round numbers, you have kind of grown with your growth that you see in the value of the million each year, and you're up to about sixteen million dollars a year for um, for annual funding to, to keep to keep things going. Let's just say it that way, because you all just talked about a lot of the items that keep the things going. But we do have an opportunity right now where uh, we can start the, uh, what I'll call the first phase, if you wanna do phases, of a bond referendum staying at 65 mils, which means that uh, you issue referendum debt and your millage stays at, at 65, so it's viewed as a no tax increase millage, uh, I'm sorry, no tax increase referendum. Uh, same thing that Beaufort County School District uh, just did. Now, how would we um, um, accomplish that? Well, um, our numbers show that conservatively, the first phase could be at $200 million. And so if you wanted to, in terms of moving expeditiously, if you were to pass a uh, resolution, um, say in you know, January or February uh, of next year, you could hold a bond referendum you know, 90 days thereafter. 
Um, you could also pass the resolution a little bit later and, and the 90 days could push you all the way to, to November. We have a number of school districts that have um, kind of May-ish uh, referendums coming up and we have some that have May, uh, uh, November 24 referendums um, coming up. And we, of course, we've had, we just had three referendums here, uh, November 2023. The, the form of the debt that we would issue is, is, is um, really modeled after what we did in Spartanburg 7. Uh, there, what we did is through the construction period, we issued interim financing. So you can issue bond anticipation notes each year. They're 12 month notes. You issue the amount that you need for 12 months. And then at that point, um, after 12 months, you look at your draw schedule, you update your construction needs your, through your cycle. We issue another 12 month period and we, re we repeat that. And then as we can move to permanent debt based upon your growth and the debt rolling off, we move um, to you know fixed rate long term debt like uh, like you're used to um, in in you know prior debt issuances. Uh, it was very successful in Spartanburg Seven. I think we projected in year around year five we would go permanent debt and with growth. I think it really was either four or three years. We we moved a little more quickly there because our numbers are conservative for a reason. We want to you know beat our we want to beat our estimates um, and we want to go in with a kind of a worst case scenario. So when I'm quoting you 200 million, we're looking at a, an assumed growth rate of 3%. You grew on a collectible value of a mill over, over 7% last year. And um, in terms of the borrowing rate, we use 5% for the borrowing rate. If you were to go out today, it'd be less than 5%. It'd be around 4.75 to 4.5%. Um, so both of those items are, are conservative for a reason. Um, the thing that I like most about um, the sizing of the 200 million here, if that's what the board chooses to go forward with, is that you can you can look at all your needs today. You can decide what um, prioritized items come up to around a $200 million figure. But in roughly two to three years from now, you'll be in the same position where you could do a phase two. So as you as you make your you know your list of needs and you know think think you know three years ago you know your needs are probably different than they are today three years fast forward they're probably going to be a little bit different so you're really at a point in time where you could start doing um, uh, phases and and I think Buford's a great example of um, of a similar situation where their debt was rolling off and they decided to um, form a committee and they came up. Uh, in their example, they came up with 600 million in needs. They funded 300, and then three years later, we just funded 439 million. I think is what the, the final number came to for their phase two. Um, so here, uh, we're, we would recommend that you all look at a bond referendum if you ch so choose to do a bond referendum at 200 million dollars. I think that's a very conservative number given our assumptions. And then, uh, as you move into a potential phase two, and we continue to refine and look at the numbers, issue debt, you guys can come back with uh, another no tax increase uh, referendum. The, the last thing I'll point out is in, in the Buford example that I give you, their first referendum required a tax increase. Then the future referendums did not require a tax increase. So we, we projected on the front end what the mill rate needed to be to sustain multi-phases. Here, your tax rate was already set uh, previously when prior referendums and we've been able to keep things you know moving forward at a at a very good um, rate of pace um, to you know meet your eight percent needs and now I think you're at a position where you could start moving back into some referendum long-term fixed rate needs the debt would not be uh, greater than a term of 25 years um, and that's from the inception date so um, we look in my model here that I have, I have debt being paid off no later than uh, 2050, 2050. So when you back that date up, it comes out to exactly 25 years. So if we issue debt, say in year three, it wouldn't be 25 year debt, it would be 22 year debt, would be the term. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. I know I went through a lot of, of information you all have seen a lot of information I know over the course of time because there's been so many resolutions and refundings and everything coming 
uh, before you all, but you're really at this beginning point um, on a referendum program basis. Uh, and I think you have the luxury of not having to change that 65 mils to complete probably a good number of projects. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's um, Great news. fantastic news. Brian, we had spoken a, a few weeks ago and started kind of talking through that. Um, you know, I think from, from a district perspective, right, we, we talk about all our needs and we talk about facility needs. We need new buildings. Um, and, and this type of stuff is a drop in the bucket. We, we can't build a new building. We don't have the money for it. <laughs> but with something like this, I think it kind of opens up some possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. I think the, my big takeaway is um, no millage increase. That's that's huge. Um, you know, the first go around 200 million three years from now, I think we said three, 300, 400 million. You know, and then three years down the road, you've got another three, 400 million dollars. That would be separate referendums, right? Yes. Right. So can you, do you, when you plan to do your first one, do you have to plan more, or can you just start with? No, you, I mean you could do if, if we if we figured out two hundred million got us everything we needed. I, I don't think it would. Then I think you can stop, right, Brian? Correct. I think I think what we have seen be successful, specifically in that Buford example that I was talking about, is when you start talking about what I'll call big ticket items, these larger items. Uh, you you end up with more than 200 million, and it's always good to know going into this process that there are future dollars. If you don't talk about the potential for future dollars, then you know some people who have a project that feel that it's you know it may not fit in in phase one, but they need to know that there's a phase two. They need to know that there's a phase three, and that the district is looking beyond you know just this first phase. So I think it's good to talk about it. For everyone to understand it and if there's a project that just can't fit in phase one at least they know that it can be fit in phase two and that there is um a, you know a a good robust amount of money to be available for phase two and for phase three well uh, once the community i think sees right so if you if you do phase one responsibly you no know, millage increase and then they see hey the district followed through they did these projects we got this I think future phases then become a little bit easier. I would assume. I would agree with that. The 25 years off of like each. So three years from now we pass it. It was 25 years from that start for the second phase. Or did he say 25 years from the first referendum? And that goes for the next one too. You know what I mean? Like to phase with the first one. First one. And then so if three years we pass another one, they'll add like be 25 for that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. And if if, if interest rates go back to you know about zero percent like we have, you know, a few years ago, we may not issue 25 year debt. We may issue 20 year debt. It just really depends. Okay. Under back. state law, just so you know, under state law you can go up to 30 years. Looking back at Mr. Souls, I mean, that's, that's got to be pretty exciting from a facilities perspective, right? I would love to get caught up to a point where I can say we're not $450 million behind in maintenance, deferred maintenance. And that would be, I don't, I don't know that anybody can say that, but that would, that would be the main goal is to get everything caught up and, and Things that are going down you know, today can be caught up in, in five years. So we, we can, I, I'd be just I'd just be happy to say we've got no air conditioners that are 30 years old in the district. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, and, and again, I, when, when we talk about this, I got pretty excited because that is, it really is a game changer when you think about it because we can take that initial sum, right? Because again, I think we all agree we, we probably need four or five schools like today yeah and so we can get through that we can get through that initial kind of build out of of actual new space building wings building schools and then down the road three years from now six years from now whatever that looks like 
At that point, we're probably not talking about maybe new space per se, but hey, now we can do really cool things in the district and now there's new now there's new interior stuff we can do for today's kids because it's going to be different six years from now. And they can see it. Right. Yeah. And that means a whole lot. As that's, that's a game changer. They can support you. Absolutely. Right. Because when you were talking about Knightsville Elementary, that made me think about we could have some money with this to do some renovations there for sure. Yeah. It just becomes a little bit easier. Trailers and so, you know, next steps, Brian, just just high level. Um, like you said, obviously, this this has to be a referendum, so it has to go to the public. It has to be on a ballot, correct? Yes, um, uh, two two points. And I, 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 there's an email I received from your bond council. Um, she's driving to Franny's driving to a meeting, so she couldn't join on Teams um, via via her phone. So I'll read you the high points that she wanted to have mentioned. Um, but before I do that, you know, just from a uh, from a global perspective, if you did 200 million phase one and three years later you came with a phase two and it's three or four hundred million dollars, then three years after that you could come back with another, you know, three to five hundred million dollars, just depending. So you can you can start building out um, some ideas of you know how much money you can have over maybe a nine year period. So just keep that in mind as you're as you're working through things. I know the construction folks do a good job on inflation and they like to get ahead of inflation and you know purchasing land and thinking long term. Uh, in terms of um, bond count, so I'll just read the email that she wrote because I think it'll 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 help summarize um, some timing and some steps. Uh, she states that since she won't be able to join on team, she wants to hit some quote high points below. In order for the school district to hold a bond referendum in May of 2024, the board will need to adopt a resolution ordering the referendum at least 90 days prior to the date of the referendum. The resolution will include the form of the question to be presented to the voters. This ballot question will include the identification of all projects included in the referendum and will specify the total amount to be borrowed. When selecting a date for a referendum, the school district has wide discretion. We recommend that the referendum be held while school is in session. So the first or second week of May should be considered for the referendum. Once the school district has identified the projects, we will work closely with the administration to draft the official ballot question. So that gives you a little bit, um, um, a little pre-information from your bond council. Uh, my, my role is really just to you know, make sure that the math works. Uh, I don't get into the the, the projects necessarily. Um, Ms. Heiser and her firm have to get into the projects because she has to make sure that the question matches uh, the projects that you identify. And then we, you know, as a board, we've got to look logistically, right? Because as, as a board, assuming we move forward with a resolution and, and we want to, to move forward, we can no longer advocate for that position as a board, right? You would think we could, but we cannot because it's to the voters at that point. So what we did for the last one in 2012, we, we formed a completely um, separate entity, a separate committee uh, from the district. They, they operated independently uh, and they operated and advocated for that. So again, so that's- We can do a lot of education. Right. We just we can't say as a, as a board we can't say as board members we need to vote for this. Right. And they have to really fund anything they right to right. Right. So they are an outside entity. Right. So they would raise yeah. So they would have to raise their own funding that, to so advocate. That other yeah. Correct. Yeah. Can't, can't be used, used by school funds. funds at yeah. all. Can't be housed in the district. They can't use yeah. district email. No district phones. Right. Completely separate entity. Um, so again, just just logistically thinking through that, some pieces to as well. Is Brad agreeing? We'll have very specific guidelines. We're working with Ms. Vinay and Tony to come up with that list coming off those projects. And you talked about four hundred forty-five million coming off that list, all those projects, and then spreading those out amongst all of our buildings, and then we're bringing that to the board. Sure, we'll be talking about that working together to identify those projects for the first 
something that the board wants to pursue, then we would look at what those projects would be in the first phase. Well, yeah, I think we want to be very transparent with the community to say, hey, here's here's the big ticket items. I this know, is this is what we're able to do. I think that's huge. Is you get the buy-in when people know where the money is going. You know, even more so. So, but you back to that. We would be including some of the new construction, like. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. That's like right off the projects, and I'm like, yeah, we, priority oh, yeah. is probably also. Yes. Absolutely. When, when, Brian, when is that issue? So, if we were to do that in May and, and knock on wood, everything went through as we would like it to, I mean, that issues in May, June, like how, how much time? Uh, so, after a bond referendum is passed, you have a 30 day waiting period, and then you actually have to formally accept the referendum results. So um, I, I saw an email today on Buford, their December board meeting, their board will accept the referendum results. Once that occurs, then you could proceed with issuing um, debt at any time. It really then becomes what's the draw schedule look like from your construction folks on a monthly basis. Uh, and then we look at, OK, how much money do you need? You know, when is when is the beginning date you need money? Uh, looking out 12 months, how much do you need? And that's the amount that we would borrow um, in interim financing. And then we would update, you know, probably about eight months um, from that date, you know, maybe like four months before maturity of the interim, the first interim, and then see where you are in your construction cycle and, and repeat the same process. And then eventually we start terming out the debt to permanent fixed rate. So it really is driven by that draw schedule. Um, some We've had some communities that, uh, you know, purchase some land with with referendum. So there is some need immediately. We have some that already have the land. So uh, it's really more of being shovel ready. Uh, and then we have some that, you know, have to go through the, the architect planning stages and so forth. And we have, a, you know, maybe a six month, um, six month period where there's a reimbursement resolution in place. And then we issue some debt. So every situation is a little bit different, but that magic draw schedule, monthly draw schedule for each of the projects is really what the, is what the driver is for um, for the debt issuance cycle. Perfect. I like it. That's um, that's exciting. I know that's a lot of numbers and math and finance, but at the end of the day, I think the opportunity is is pretty strong. So. I'm excited about that. Any any other questions? Well, we got Ryan. Any questions? We appreciate you. Thank you. I guess what's the next action steps? So, this. so, so I think what, what I understand again, next action steps. So we're in November now. We would move. We would need to work with our bond council moving into January to have the resolution. That basically the resolution from the board would would outline the question or questions we would ask yeah. of the voters. So we would need to approve that as a board. In the day, right? We would have the date. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming maybe as part of the resolution, we would stipulate the date. May something is is my assumption. Kind of looking for an idea. Yes. So we would we'd have the date set. We would have to work with the election commission to get ballots out, all, all that sort of stuff. So we would need to work on a project list to bring to y'all when when. Like I'd like to have something to you by December yeah. just to have some information for you. And that way you know what you're yes. thinking about doing that resolution and thinking about that question. So we need to have those projects and additions to you by December. Do we need a host like a sort of like workshop to work on that question and go over some of the ideas? Do you feel like is that something we should Yeah, I mean and, and we had chatted about that a little bit when we had kind of our informal discussion. I, it, it's interesting because the bond referendum question, obviously it's, it's very legally, yeah. so it has to be legally done correctly. But you have to be specific enough, but general enough. <laughs> right. Like how do we, because to me, I don't think you want to outline very, very, very specific mm -hmm. projects because then you pitch and you pull yourself. Oh, yeah, and so I think you just need to figure out what that looks like. We, we've got examples, you know, Buford, Spartanburg, they were all that. Um, but, to that point, yeah, maybe in January before we actually move forward with the resolution, maybe we do a, a workshop. It probably makes sense. Workshop in December. Yeah, like, like you do in December. Yeah. Yeah. Before the December board meeting. 
Yeah. When we when in January would you bring it? Beginning in January then? Sure. Or at least in 90 days. Yeah, so like either end of December or when we come yeah. back. We don't, we don't have to you don't have to raise a resolution when we first talk about it. We can talk yeah. about it. And then yeah. we I was just thinking more of a board work session in December before we get to that January or February resolution. So yeah. yeah. So the big big takeaways I think we wanted to at least Look at doing it before school is out because that way it's still on people's minds. Yeah, um, I agree. And then that May time frame, of course, that's that's an off, an off cycle election, and so special. special election. So we have to look at the logistics there and, and those pieces. And I believe the school corporation would have to pay for that. Right. So we we probably yeah we need to go ahead and start looking at costs there from the election commission to see what they. What and that comes from district once we pay for that. Or, uh, yep. Correct, right. Okay. I like the idea of May over November, definitely. Let's have me next November. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. just get yeah, we lost. Need, we need some of these projects done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moving on school for sure. Yeah. So, you know, we've got our regularly scheduled board meeting. Any any other questions? Yeah. All good, good stuff. I guess this this uh, the board meeting minus phase is at least um we'll bring out a finance. Okay, perfect. This is plan. Okay. Good that. All good. Um committee of the whole. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. Yeah, Brian, thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks you guys and um you know good luck. Um there's a lot of refunding paperwork. Don't forget about that. I know we're going to get lost in the referendum here, so don't forget about the refundings that are coming. And um, you know, reach out if I can help. But uh, I think going forward from here, it's going to be a lot of uh, Franny Heiser. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Thank Any you. Bye bye. For the good of the group. Motion to adjourn. Discussion. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. We'll see everybody in a few minutes. I don't, I'm not, I'm, okay. I think that's the way.